Hi, I'm Jacob with Dynamic Defense Solutions, and today we're going to be talking about a first responder skill that absolutely everyone should know, CPR. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, is a medical procedure involving the repeated compression of a patient's chest in order to restore blood circulation and breathing. CPR should be performed if no life signs are present. If the patient's unconscious, unresponsive, not breathing, or not breathing normally, we need to administer CPR as soon as possible. Now let's talk about the steps of CPR. The very first thing we need to do is make sure that the scene is safe. If the area is dangerous to you, then you're gonna be no help to the patient and you could become a patient yourself. So let's use some common sense and take into consideration the environment that the person is in and why they could have been hurt in the first place. Next, we need to check for responsiveness. Use verbal prompts followed by physical prompts to check for responsiveness. Call 911. If someone is with you, tell them to call 911 and to grab an AED if one is available. If you're alone, call 911 on speakerphone. Next, if you have it, put on your PPE. Then we're going to check for breathing. Use the head tilt chin lift to open the airway and look down the body, observing for chest rise and fall while also listening for breath sounds. If there is no breathing or responsiveness, begin chest compressions. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down how to properly deliver chest compressions. So once you've decided to deliver chest compressions, we need to locate the center of the chest, right at the sternum, in between the nipples or breasts. We're going to take the heel of our palm and place it directly on that point, interlocking our fingers from the other hand, Centering our body weight over the patient's chest, arms locked at the elbows, and then we're going to deliver 30 compressions at 2 inches of depth for 100 to 120 beats per minute. After we've delivered 30 compressions, we need to deliver two rescue breaths. We're gonna do this by pinching the patient's nostrils together. We're gonna to do a head tilt chin lift, and then we're gonna breathe two steady breaths, just enough to watch the rise and fall of the chest. It's important to use a barrier if you have one, and if you do have one handy, you should go ahead and use that. Okay, so now let's talk about the use of an automated external defibrillator or an AED. If you're not alone, send someone to grab an AED if one is available. An AED is going to greatly increase the chances of survival of someone that's suffering from cardiac arrest. Continue CPR even after the AED arrives. Have the person that brought the AED prep it for use by opening it up and turning it on. Ensure the patient is not lying in a pool of water or anything that could be influenced by the delivered shock. Suspend CPR to expose the patient's bare chest and attach AED pads according to the provided instructions. Be sure the patient has no metal jewelry like necklaces or chains. Follow the AED's built-in audio instructions and continue CPR if prompted to. Okay, so now let's break down using an AED and talk about its automated instructions. Okay, so here we have a Zoll training AED. This is a very common popular brand that, uh, that you'll see a lot around a lot of workplaces. So the very first thing we're going to do is remove the lid. Now the lid actually can be used as a propping device for the patient. So you can put it underneath the patient's shoulder blades and this can help open up their airway, kind of hold them in a head tilt chin lift position. But we're going to set that aside. It's also going to include the pads. Now certain AEDs will have different pad layouts. This one's very straightforward and simple. It actually has it all connected. So it's one unit that's very straightforward and easy to use. And then we have the AD itself, which is a uh, pretty straightforward system here. Um, it's going to give you instructions that are automated and then it has visual cues as well. So just like we talked about before, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. Automatic defibrillator. Unit OK. It does a check. Stay calm. Check responsiveness. Call for help. We've checked responsiveness. Attach We've called for help. pads to patient's bare chest. So we're going to go ahead and attach to the bare chest right here. This is on the sternum in the center of the chest. 
Attach defib pads to patient's bare chest. We're going to go ahead and plug it in. Attach defib pads to patient's bare chest. Don't touch patient. Analyzing. It's going to do a check, check the pulse, do its own little test on the patient. Don't touch patient. Analyzing. We want to be careful not to touch the patient at this point. Don't touch patient. Shot will be delivered in three, two, one. Stand clear. Shock delivered. Start CPR. At this point, right on the cross, we're going to do CPR. Deliver two rescue breaths and then continue CPR. Okay, so it's important to understand that an AD may not always work, but it's a really important tool to use, and if we have one at our disposal, let's use it. All right, so now let's break down CPR on an infant or a patient that's one year old and younger. So not a lot of differences here, but there are some key ones that we're gonna go over. The very first thing we're gonna do is again, make sure that the scene is safe and we're gonna put on our PPE if we have it, and then we can begin our treatment. So as we approach the patient, we need to be checking for responsiveness. We can shout, we can tap on the shoulder as well as the foot, just light taps. If we're getting no responsiveness from the patient, then we need to direct someone to call 911 or we need to call 911 with our phone on speakerphone. The next thing we need to do is check for breathing. So let's do a very slight, it doesn't take a lot of effort, a very, very slight, gentle head tilt chin lift to open up the, pa the baby's airway. And then we're gonna observe breathing. Okay, so once we can see that there's no breathing or no normal breathing, like gasps or struggling to breathe is not considered normal breathing, we're gonna go ahead and deliver chest compressions. Again, it's 30 chest compressions at a rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute. We're gonna extend two fingers like this, finding the nipple line just below it in the lower one third of the sternum. We're gonna center our fingers there and we're gonna push directly down while the baby's laying on a flat hard surface for 30 compressions. After we've delivered 30 chest compressions, we need to deliver two rescue breaths. Again, very slight head tilt chin lift. We're going to cover the baby's nose and mouth with our mouth, and we're going to breathe two very gradual, gentle breaths into the baby, just enough to see rise and fall of the chest. After that, we're going to continue our chest compressions until professional help arrives or until we're relieved by someone that can assist us in CPR. That's pretty much it for CPR on both infants and adults. Now remember, scene safety is very important. We need to try to keep ourselves safe while we're helping them. It's also important to do CPR until emergency services get on scene. We do not want to stop CPR at any point once we've started. So once you've made that decision to do CPR, you're in it. So do CPR. If you have any other questions on CPR or AED, definitely let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.